Hey everyone, we're going to react to Season 1, Episode 5 of The Chosen Yeshua's very first miracle of the water to wine. I'm Tom and this is Sam. We are elders at a Messianic congregation and we want to give you a Messianic perspective on this episode. So welcome to Grafted. What feast are they celebrating in Jerusalem? I think they were celebrating Passover, Pesach, so, which is one of the coming up festivals. Three times a year, Passover, Sukkot, and Shavuot. Shavuot. Yeah. yeah. Which means his parents, his family, were devout Jews, right? They're yeah. following the Leviticus 23 and the biblical commandments to mm -hmm. celebrate and party. Appear before the Lord. That's right. <laughs> Everywhere, day and night, we were so scared. I told him, he's okay. Why is everyone so upset? Betty, he was injured. You were supposed to be riding in the caravan with Uncle Abaitana. I was supposed to be with my father. Then why weren't you? I was. I was getting sucked into the moment, and then you paused it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, like, that would be so strange. Mm-hmm. To be the parents of Yeshua. And to watch him get a little mustache. Right. <laughs> You weren't thinking that? No? <laughs> it's right no, there. I was in the moment. What do you mean? <laughs> you were saying you were in the moment with his mustache. All-inclusive moment. You were in the temple? It was incredible, really. You should have seen him. He was teaching when I found him. The rabbis, the scribes, the scholars, they could not believe their ears. They barely let us be. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? It is too early for all this. If not now, when? I was just thinking, they're just in awe of his understanding, right? Mm, right. And so the Pharisees and all the religious leaders, they knew the scriptures so well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that they're like, oh, he's really good at memorization or something like that. It was, it was his exposition. It was like his... Yeah like understanding and, and maybe even application hmm. or, I mean, you know, maybe that's my question for you. What was it that was astounding them, do you think? I mean, for, to them, I think, they, wasn't he there for three days after they left? Is it something like that? That's what they just said here. I can't remember in the text. I was trying to is. think from the text itself, but like for them to, for him to like hang out with scribes and Pharisees and those guys for three days and to have, I mean, it would have to be just interpretation. It would have to be like, you know, application. Right. It wouldn't just be, let me quote scripture for you. Yeah, for they wouldn't have days. been wowed by that. Right. Plus, like, losing a little kid for three days, that'd be scary. Right. <laughs> yeah. What were they doing? <laughs> right. Let's get through all of this with you. Please. Maybe we should get going before they make a formal inquiry. Hmm? <laughs> Jesus, please don't do that again. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Good. May I read? We'll see. Hmm? Come now, we've got a long journey. What are you going to do for your mother for this transgression, huh? I'm going to make him rub your feet. <laughs> yeah, so how did Yeshua's parents discipline him <laughs> you know like he said this was it a transgression you know right. he said it was a transgression I don't, right. was it a transgression or i think he was i think he was being hyperbolic yeah i think so too yeah so yeah, yeah it would be an interesting challenge you think your kids are a challenge <laughs> that's a like a different type of a challenge you know yeah. where you're just feeling like i'm a terrible parent all the time <laughs> as your your child's doing everything perfectly and you're <laughs> the one that's like like, this is bizarre. It's like, God, maybe it's an age-old question, but like, was Yeshua a perfect child? Did they have to discipline him? Was he always obedient, you know? Well, we know he's a baby. And right. so we know he's so needy, just like we were. Like, right. he needed his parents to survive. Talk about humility. Right. Where the God himself needed mm -hmm. humanity to live. Right. So, and you know, there's this, he grew and in favor and stature with God and man, you know, like mm -hmm. with this like reality where he's growing. There's maturation happening. Right. right. Some people say they're in Jerusalem and there's 
some sort of bar mitzvah because mm. he's 12 years old, but it doesn't actually say that in the yeah, I've text. I've heard that. That's interesting. Uh, because, you know, traditional uh, bar and mitzvah is actually, well, it's 13, but so it's close, Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's like this coming of age time, and this is definitely a coming of age moment, right, where he's interacting with the, mm. the Jewish scholars and, and scribes about yeah. the text. So he is kind of presenting himself in this greater way, uh, although I would probably say he was always a son of the commandment. Bar mitzvah means right. son of the commandment. So here's a question for you, Tom. If he, if he and his family are going up year after year to Jerusalem to all these things, and he had these encounters, at least one, right, with religious leaders. Do you think they would have, by the time he was in his earthly ministry, do you think they would have known who he was already? I, I haven't ever thought about that. It's yeah. a really good question. But I would say yes, because he's not like anyone else. Right. Right. I mean, this is, he's astounding them, right? Mm-hmm. So do you just forget that? I mean, right. you know, when you meet a really, like, unique a savant child or something sticks like out in your it memory, sticks right? out and you yeah. remember especially so if your whole world is a bible scholar type of a thing right and you're like who is this kid who's like right. showing people up i don't think you forget that that's what i would think we'll see what the others do what if they didn't pack lunch will we look stupid what if it comes off as ungrateful i don't know maybe it would look like we never traveled with a messiah before and we don't know what we're doing <laughs> a bit nervous Come on, don't be nervous. If you're nervous, I'll come on too strong. Don't tell me you're not nervous. I said I was. Hmm? You said yep. if I'm nervous. I know what I said. I don't want to let him down. I don't want to do it wrong. Come on. We'll probably both do it wrong. It's like fishing. Remember when Dad taught us? Dad didn't teach us anything. We just sat there and watched. And then it was our turn and we made our own mistakes. Can you believe this? Well, you guys are great. Hey. Hello. <laughs> You've been here long? Oh, yeah. I enjoyed the conversation between Peter and Andrew because I feel like we have that conversation. <laughs> Help us not screw it up. Yeah. That's like. That's right. like one of our prayers. I don't, don't want to screw it up. Actually, like for we, real. we prayed that prayer. <laughs> Right Today. before we recorded this <laughs> true story. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I like that yeah. because... I might have said, Lord, help Sam not to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, and, and help, help Tom, Tom not to screw it up. That's, I think that's one of your favorite prayers. Yeah. I've adopted it as one of my favorite prayers. I think Matt referenced it today of a different favorite prayer, but like this, come Holy Spirit, right? right. Or help us, Lord. That's mm-hmm. what you were saying, you know, because the Holy Spirit is the helper. Yeah. We're saying... We need help. We right. don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Help us not screw it up. That's mm-hmm. another way of saying your kingdom come, your will be done. That's good. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And what we didn't do is we didn't bring a lunch. If you like our videos, please share with your friends. And if you want to help us make more videos, you can donate by clicking in the link in the description below. I know that look. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. I was thinking. Mm. If this wedding is worth a journey for you, who has so much to do, mm. perhaps it is also worth a journey for many wealthy Jews. You believe important and powerful Hebrews will be there? Possibly. I'm very keen, son. The most important and powerful person I know will be there. Oh, yeah? My mother. <laughs> Isn't your mother from Nazareth? You should announce this after the guests. What was right? that? That's the second. That's the second was that? Nazareth joke. Was that? That wasn't a negative thing. Was just, he was just asking. Was, was that? A, was that a reference? Like oh. anything good come from Nazareth? Thing I didn't feel like I it. I don't know. Maybe so. I mean, he did give him a negative look like that. Like, right. Like, like. Hey, don't talk about my mama that way. Yeah. <laughs> but I, well, I don't, don't think Cana was any like special na- to knock either. Old Testament, right? Well, I, mean, I just think he probably shouldn't. Talk to Jesus about his mama. In general. <laughs> you just sounds dangerous. No mama jokes? I think in general you don't talk about someone's mom, which I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna talk about Teresa. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey <mom>. Teresa! <laughs> Hi mom. Shout out. <laughs> Indian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful ladies. Don't 
There'll be no Romans. Seems like the perfect place to gather more followers. Get this whole thing moving. It's not my special day, Simon. It's the special day of the couple, Asher and Sarah. They are blessed to have you at their wedding. Do they know what a remarkable thing it is? Well, considering that I was the clumsy teenager who cracked my head open at Asher's when he was a child, I don't think he finds me remarkable. Did you think much of your childhood friends? No, he didn't have any. That's not true. I stand corrected. He had me. Compulsory service. I don't remember kids exactly lining up around the block. Mary, true. did you think that having brothers would be like this? I always wanted brothers as a little girl. So when you have 12, and tell me how you like it. 12? You'll see. <laughs> so you think he had a premeditated number mm -hmm. of the amount of... Definitely. Yeah? Why is that? Twelve tribes of Israel. Bingo, bingo. Boom. <laughs> There's the apple eating begins. That's true. You know, Andrew's mm -hmm. eating a lot. He's mm -hmm. kind of like the Brad Pitt of the Chosen, mm -hmm. you know? Brad Pitt's eating all mm -hmm. the time. <laughs> Funny uh, Hebrew reference. So in Hebrew, the word for apple is tapuach. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the word for potato is tapuach adama, which means apple of the earth. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's modern Hebrew. Or a human apple. <laughs> mm, adama. adama. Yeah, it's different, but it's close. <laughs> it's more so they're like, in the Bible, there's no word for potato, and then they're like, there's, there is a biblical word for apple, so then they're like... Potato, potato. Knock, knock. Can we come in? <laughs> Hi, Ima. Oh, mm. how are you? Have you ever picked your mom up off the ground like that? <laughs> I thought you were going to ask, have you ever been picked up, you know, for hugging purposes? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't expecting have I yeah. ever picked up my mom. No, I've never picked you up could. my mom. You could pick up your mom. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Good, next time. Next time. Watch out, Mom. <laughs> Thomas! In a moment. Thomas! Okay, okay. Hi. Am I going mad, or has 40 been the magic number all along? The head count? Why? Are we over? They always do this. I brought food in our front The last count was 80. You made a mistake. Maybe by a few. Even if I'm off by five, five, the wine. I did advocate for a fourth. <laughs> but three is, is still enough. Four to sixty. That was awesome. I love that scene. So you have like, this is some of the traditional weddings. Uh, maybe like seven day celebrations. That's wild. So I think this is. Like, it just seems like random during the day. Like, why are they dancing? But mm. I, I think that's probably what would happen. And it's like a camp out? Uh, maybe, yeah. That'd be, that'd be pretty rare. <laughs> it was a big sacrifice, though, because you like most people were day laborers. So if you didn't work mm. for a week, you know, you're they're probably even feeding them. I mean, this is a wow, really yeah. costly celebration. But I love how they're all circle dancing, too. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the Hebrew word, but the Hebrew word... Um, for for one of the words for dancing and I don't know if it's like Samuel or Chronicles or something like that mm -hmm. but it, it some of the the interpretations are circle dancing actually S just within the in the word itself well like it, that's it like the that? strongs or the you know whatever oh, cool. lexicon is saying that like it's actually circle dancing which is interesting because mm -hmm. today you'll see a lot of the Davidic or Judaic dancing and they, they do circle mm -hmm. dances and then you see them doing mm -hmm circle dances here and the men are actually dancing separate from the women because you have oh, I didn't pick up on that uh, purity laws and then because mm -hmm. the men uh, wouldn't want to become um, unclean and you know you have all those issues so I don't even know why I'm here it's usually the students that choose the rabbi not the other way around and I'm not even a student neither was I that is introduced me to him and did you meet on a uh, construction job in Bethsaida. He hasn't exactly been picking the best and brightest students. <laughs> but he works? Well, until recently. He's not a professional rabbi. Yeah, but I thought he has no home and no job. No permanent home. He's a stonemason, like you, a craftsman. 
He told us well. He asked me to follow him. He said he was building a kingdom. A fortress stronger than stone. I believed him. What were you building in Bethsaida? <laughs> a, a, a public community. An aqueduct? No, of a, something uh, humbler. What then, man? It, it's, it's not proper to say in front of a woman. I have seen and heard things that would turn your blood to ice. A la dream? <laughs> Wait, ice? Yes. Our master building a privy. I think the thing I like about that scene is that they're, they're bringing in the idea that followers of Yeshua can come from all sorts of different kinds of mm -hmm. places. You know, you had Mary who's saying, I've seen things that could make your blood turn cold. Uh, you know, you have fishermen, you have dudes building latrines, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't really matter where you're from or who you right. are to follow Yeshua is for everyone. Fill these jars with water all the way to the brim. Why? You heard him. Start drawing water, quickly. Tell anyone you find to stop what they're doing and help. From the directions you have provided, I see no logical solution to the problem. It's going to be like that sometimes, Thomas. <laughs> what did you say? I do not rebuke you. It is good to ask questions, to seek understanding. There's no time for this. I know of a man like you in Capernaum, always counting, always measuring. That's my job. And that people will think I have not done well tonight. Join me. And I will show you a new way to count and measure. A different way of seeing time. Mm. Go with you where? I, I don't understand. Keep watching. After you've been following the Lord for a while, there is this reality where like time can stop mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like in worship sometimes time stops mm -hmm. for sure it's like you're somewhere else mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes your money feels the same way like it's like where did that come from or <laughs> I can't believe somebody would give you money right right to help you or it's like it's like a different reality that we step into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's uh, the kingdom ruled by the king, right? And what he says goes. We've talked a lot about time here and there, you know, but like I think it's interesting that people kick against time a lot. I always wish you were younger. You're, you know, you wish you had more time. Why is there, you know, only 24 hours in a day? Don't have enough time. Don't have enough time. But I like to say that that God created time to reveal Himself through. I have to remind myself of that a lot. <laughs> but yeah, there's those moments where it's like, slow down, hold on. Mm -hmm. The Lord's doing something. It's getting ready to slow down for Thomas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like this. Time's gonna stop as the water turns to wine and then it's like this mm -hmm. moment in time that they'll never forget right. right as if you know those you have those miracle moments in your life and those encounters with the living god and it's as if we, if you take a moment it's as if it happened yesterday right right it's like they're they're so they're still so real and they could have been 20 years ago but it's as if it just happened. Mm -hmm. Masonry seems like harder work. It isn't harder, it's just more uh, final. If the smith wants to change the horseshoe or the plowshare or the pot hook, he has only to put the iron back into the fire and reshape it to fit his designs. They're full. Please step outside.
just for a moment, Thomas. Once you make that first cut into the stone, it can't be undone. It sets in motion a series of choices. What used to be a shapeless block of limestone or granite begins its long journey of transformation. And it will never be the same. Crazy father. That was that, this was really a really good scene. Yeah, <laughs> really well done. That was they're bringing so much in there, and mm -hmm. even like you could see it was like blood. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I did. I was like, yeah, setting in motion this. Wow, this is just beginning his journey to the cross, right? I mean, it's wow. He knows what he's mm -hmm. beginning and mm -hmm. and. Yeah, that was just just really powerful. Yeah. Just, they captured it so well. The, like, no turning back mm -hmm. moment, you know? Because mm -hmm. that's, I mean, yeah, first public miracle. I mean, I think Yeshua is submitting his will. Yeah. You know, you see that, I'm portraying that here, but you see that in the garden right before. It's like, not my will. If, the, if, if, if right. possible, let this cup pass from me. Right. But not my will. That yours be done. Mm -hmm. It's like that's what he's saying yes. here. He's right. like, okay, ready to go. Right. Yeah. I mean, in some sense, like you're saying, he's he's taking up the cross right mm -hmm. away. Yeah, he knows he knows where it ends up, and mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's so much symbolism in this miracle mm -hmm. that right. <laughs> that's you know it's portraying this this blood, and yet it's also wine and so there's this mm -hmm. this for the joy set wow. before me i endured the cross yeah. right yep like in the and the joy is peter and andrew mm -hmm. and miriam <laughs> those relationships that his friends and mm -hmm. and beyond the friend of the bridegroom mm -hmm. you know <laughs> it was this mm -hmm. this marriage language and pointing then to what the the wedding banquet mm, of the lamb, this right. like this future yeah. celebration when he, he brings his whole family into mm. the age to come and we, yeah. we celebrate as the bride and the bridegroom, right? I mean it's just right. there's just so much that this is foreshadowing. Right. I mean, because you have to ask that question, why water into wine as his first public miracle? And mm -hmm. I think there's probably a lot of answers to that question. I think it's, I think it's very but, deep, multifaceted. For but sure. you have to say bride and the, his right. longing and desire of the bridegroom. Right, right. To be with his bride, like forever in this great yeah. celebration that we'll all take part of. You know, you could say right. that the millennial kingdom is like a thousand year wedding <laughs> celebration in some right. sense, you know. Right. There's so much that's going through his heart in, in this moment. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine. It's not just oh, I have to suffer. I, I think it's again. He's seeing beyond mm -hmm. that. Even he's seeing mm -hmm. that that joy set before him. You yeah, know? I think it's important to note that's what he's saying. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm taking yeah. this cup. Yeah, and I will drink this, Father. Yeah, for the joy set before me. And then we have to drink that cup. Exactly. You know, we have to drink that wine, yeah. actually. Like, that's that's yep. the Lord's table. I yep. mean, that's we have to enter into that story. That's it. And then we have to, well, we enter into the suffering, mm -hmm. it says, even, right? 
So it's through much suffering, Paul says, that we enter into the kingdom. But then the amazing part, too, is it's so there's so much going on because then wine also represents joy. Exactly. <laughs> right? So yeah. it, it's this joy. Like it's this, There's this truth that we don't really know what joy is mm-hmm. without knowing the Lord. Right. With, without entering into this story yeah. and in, into this family, it says yep. if you haven't ever experienced true joy. Yep. Because it's this joy that, that allows you to endure all the pain and mm-hmm. all the suffering in this mm-hmm. world, which is, is seemingly unending. And it's mm-hmm. everywhere you turn, it's more suffering. And it seems like it's only getting worse. Right. And yet the whole time, it's like he's reaching out this cup. Yep. And he's saying... That this wine is available, this joy, you can experience right. it now, even in this age. Not the fullness of the joy, it's mm-hmm. it's but it's this taste mm-hmm. of the age to come. It's this taste of the banquet yeah. that's to come. Yeah. Yeah. This is an extraordinary scene. Beautiful. Go draw some out and serve it to the master of the banquet. He's like, do what now? The latter vintage, sir. Stop the music! Stop the music! <laughs> Everyone, listen! Is that the turntables? <laughs> I have something I would like to say. I would like to address the bridegroom and the bride families. At every wedding I've ever overseen, they serve the best wine first. And then, when the people have drunk freely, much later in the feast, they serve the poorer wine, the cheap stuff. <laughs> because by then, who is going to notice? <laughs> am I right? You just said, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> but you, you have chosen now to serve the best wine I have ever tasted. Let us thank them for this unnecessary but honorable gesture. He's like, uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> Planned it. <laughs> that's good. It's kind of like something amazing happens and it's like the Lord and then people are like looking at you and you're like, no, really, nah, like that's yeah. just, I just laid my hands on the guy and he got healed and I, <laughs> like, just, I just happened to be there. I was just excited to be at the party. You know? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I'll drink to that. Right. You know? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Josie needed to make a t-shirt that says, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the other really cool feature here that's happening that that we had some friends of ours point out years ago who were like servants. I mean, they are like servants of servants. They're just, they pointed out that this is their favorite miracle because mm. the only ones who saw the miracle oh, yeah. were the servants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's Great. this truth that when you are a person that serves, oh, wow, that's good. that there are times when you see the miracles that the Lord's doing that nobody else sees. Yeah, Like there's there's this, you said dignity, but there's this mm-hmm. also this blessing that comes mm. when you serve him in the secret place wow. and you serve him behind the scenes uh, that no one else gets to be a part of, that no one else knew. They, they're just drinking mm-hmm. kind of the, the fruit of the miracle, right. but they didn't actually get to be a witness and a part of the miracle. Mm-hmm. So I think that's such a, what an amazing perspective to see that in this story. Wow. Did you see you spilling? <laughs> I think this mug's leaking or something. Am I right? <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> Can I finish? Can, can I, I finish? Can I finish? It helps sanitize. Oh <laughs> 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 